Bienvenidos o todos. Welcome everyone. I am the Seamster and welcome to my dance studio. Nah, this ain't my dance studio. I actually work here. I sew here. I don't have all the beautiful setup in the background with flowers and all the doilies and everything just looks perfect. Why? Because I said it. I work here. So let's talk about what we're doing today. We're making some thumb cuffs. Yeah, these things that are on my hands, but this isn't the way they should look. They should look like this. Well, all right then, that feels better. Not really, I had to squeeze my body in this thing. But these are thumb cuffs. They get attached to the end of a long sleeve of a sweatshirt or even a flannel. So, we've been in department stores and you go into the women's section and there it is. All the sweatshirts, all of the long sleeves, they all have some type of thumb cuff to keep their hands warm. Listen, guys need to keep their hands warm too. And everybody needs to keep their hands warm. So I'm gonna show you fast and easy way to get these thumb cuffs done because I've seen them done on videos and I've been just pulling my hair out just wondering why are they making this so difficult? Why are they cutting and nipping and tagging and, and marking and snip and like a grommy drommy or that origami thing that you do with paper? Listen, this is a really simple thing here. It should only take you seven minutes from the beginning right to the end to get a pair of thumb cuffs done. Okay, come on, let's do this. Okay, so what it comes down to is that I have an old t-shirt here, okay, and I've sewn over 300 thumb cuffs, so I'm going to say it's so easy that you can actually do this in exactly 7 minutes. That's right, whether you're using a serger sewing machine or a straight stitch sewing machine, I'm going to show you how to do both, but in the end, you still need a straight stitch sewing machine. Okay, so first we need to understand what is rib knit. Rib knit is basically material that allows itself to stretch. See that rib, them lines in there? That means it allows it to stretch this way, but not much stretch that way. T-shirts and sweatshirts pretty much have the same thing. So now we got to measure our hand, right? So let's go ahead and measure what our hand is. So what you do is simply take a measuring tape, clamp it in with your thumb, go around, and my hand, remember now your thumb has to be in line with your pointer finger just like this and it measures eight and a quarter. I'm going to add a quarter inch for allowance to sew. So I'm going to make my pattern at eight and a half. Standard thumb cuffs are typically around 11 to 12 inches. So eight and a half by, I'm going to go 11. So that allows it to be either six inches or five and a half inches for that much coverage and a little bit on your wrist there for comfort. All right, so make my pattern, and it just so happens that my pattern is basically just a regular piece of paper. That's right, eight and a half by 11. You can see my lines across the top here. That allows me to know that I have to be in line with my ribbed. Okay, uh, rotary cutter. If you don't have one of these, you need to get them. They run typically around $12, and you can get the extra razor uh, wheels that come with it. Okay, very, very sharp. And if you don't have a cutting mat, you should get yourself a cutting mat too, okay? Them typically run around $24 for a 24 by 36 six mat, okay? Be careful with this razor cutter too because it is very, very sharp. And apply some pressure as you push. Okay, and that should basically, oh man, look at that. That's pretty sweet. Just pull the weight easily, just like that. Take your material, both of them, and simply just fold them both over on, on edge. Just like this, lengthwise, okay? Just like that, and then flatten them out. Okay, just like that. So what I'm gonna show you, I should be sewing right now, but I'm not. But what's gonna end up happening is that this will end up just folding over, okay, like this. And what we're gonna do is I have dots on my sewing machine that go an inch and a half of sewing from here to here. Remember the back stitch and back stitch here because you're gonna have a lot of play with your thumb. And then there'll be an opening where you lift your presser foot and pull the material through and you'll begin back stitch here and then sew all the way to the wrist. And then you'll just simply turn it inside out. So here's a couple pictures of my sewing machine that has the dots at an inch and a half and two inches that allow that to pull through. And here we go. Okay, everybody, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the measurements that I was talking about from the needle, inch and a half, make a dot or set a little piece of tape. That way you know it's an inch and a half. And then again, from the needle, two inches, uh, set another piece of tape or make another little dot. Again, I use this so much to make thumb cuffs, these two sewing machines. The dots are already there. And if we move down to the Project Runway, 
uh, my plate is automatically an inch and a half so I know when to stop sewing and then there's my two inches at the back of the sewing machine so I know that's my opening for my thumb to come through all right so let's actually go ahead and make these thumb cups real quick now on the serger machine if you got a serger great I'm gonna show you both ways either with a serger or without the serger okay so let's go ahead and get the cutter up set that down and let's run it through snip and then snip the very top without actually cutting the material okay again underneath the cutter snip and snip now the reason why I use a serger is it's a lot faster and I actually like seeing the threads come through when you push your thumb thumb through you can actually see the threads and it has that nice little overlock stitch over that fabric right there so it's nice and tight okay so now what we're going to do is I'm going to fold this end over on top of that one just like that nice and even okay and I'm going to set that underneath there the press it foot set that down on there and I'm going to be on the inside serger stitch of the double needle there so I'm on the inside stitch and simply I'm just going to as we rotate that we need to do that and then stitch forward and then stitch back because remember you always want to stitch back and then forward and I know that my first stop is going to be at an inch and a half which is that first mark or the back of my plate which is right there now I want to back up one two and three and then four and then forward again one two three four and that gives me a nice solid stitch for when my thumb goes through raise up the needle press your foot and again I'm going to pull this through all the way to the back and that will be two inches right there I can tell because that's where my thread is right now okay and again set the needle down back up and forward and back stitch and forward again until we get to the end back stitch of course and drop stitch and just like that that out and I got the side thread cutter so that makes it easy to take that off with the project runway most sewing machines pretty much have that on there and you're gonna have to snip these where you did not sew okay there'll be a thread where it pulled actually all the way through so snip snip on both sides and then here is the front now your thumb cuff is actually done you just got to turn it inside out and this is with the serger and that's why I like this because you know like I said seven minutes you can have two of them done okay so here is the thumb cuff on look at that and there is the stitch from the serger it's a nice stitch right there and I like seeing that especially if you use like a yellow but then you would see the yellow stitching right here so okay that's one way now let's go ahead let's do it without a serger sewing machine set the press foot down again roll it over Back stitch and run it through. All the way through, just like as if you were running it through the circle, like I showed you there. Okay, back stitch, front stitch, roll it up, press the foot up. That side cut around there makes it real nice. Okay, now I'm simply just going to go ahead and do the other side, same way. Make sure your thread is uh, out of the way. I don't want that getting entangled. Okay, again, press your foot down, roll the wheel down, stitch forward, reverse stitch, and forward. Again, reverse, and then forward. Roll the wheel side cutter do a little snips right here okay we're gonna do the same thing on these two right here so we don't forget about them make sure I don't cut my fingers I haven't done that yet but you know how that goes once you say it something ends up happening okay now here we go now what we're going to do since we're not going to want to see the sewed edge here is we want to turn this inside out yeah that's right 
turn it out inside out, push the corners through. Just like that. Make sure them corners come right out. Roll them out of there. Okay. Give it a nice little tug and bring the corners together. Okay, everything is still the same here, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this back in, just like that. Roll the wheel down. Start stitch forward. Back up. And stitch forward. Remember, you got a lot of material going through here. And that's why I, I recommend the serger if you have a serger, because basically what's happening here is you got uh, eight layers, so four and four, because they're all double up on top of each other. Okay, I reached the back, so that means I'm at an inch and a half. Now I want a back stitch. Front stitch. Counting my stitches. Okay, good. Raise my press, raise the needle up. Press your foot. Bring forward, remember, to the end is two inches. Let it set down. Set that back down. Now this is the part right here. You gotta make sure that this part right here is all nice and tight. Okay, and on top of each other. Okay, again, forward, count your stitches, back stitch, front stitch again, and back stitch, and front stitch all the way to the end. Back stitch, and front stitch. Raise the needle. Cut your ends off. Remember the, the two right here where you didn't sew on both of these. And the front. Simply turn it inside out again. And what happens here is that you do not see the sewn edges, okay? It's nice and smooth. I like seeing the sewn edges, but you don't have to see the sewn edges, okay? And then simply just take it and put it on. It's a nice, snug feeling right here. Okay, so let's just pretend that this is actual a full sleeve of a sweatshirt, and then it ends right here, and this is where the wrist would be. So you take your finished thumb cuff, okay? It's finished. Take it and turn it back inside out. Bad side. We want the bad side, okay? And you want the unfinished side to be with this part so we have to reach our hand in and you want this sewed edge here to be with the sewn edge of the sweatshirt sewn edge with the sewn edge this is the bad side remember take that and grab your sweatshirt and pull it through as you notice the sweatshirt is right side out that's how you want it to be okay grab grab the sewn edge here and the sewn edge here and make sure that they line up and then just simply just pull this through all the way around so that it lines up with the edges just like that now this is the part where you need a serger okay if you don't you can still do this on a straight stitch sewing machine but i'm going to do this on my serger okay so again take this press your foot is up and push it inside just like that and simply just go right around the edges make sure that you stay in line with the edge edge to edge you got to pull on a little bit to give that stretch but you can because remember that's with the rib pull your threads through and over overrun where you sewed already okay so all we do now is simply take that just like that and now we put our sweater on and you see these are lined up and look at there we have ourselves a thumb cuff on our sweatshirt peace out everybody